Welcome back to y'all hearing this. My name is Kay. Thank you so, so much for coming and joining us over here on Patreon. I am excited to get into this one. So I've been doing these lore videos uh, where I jump in and yeah, do a little bit more of a deeper dive into maybe meanings behind either if they have a storyline or just the MVs themselves. So uh, we're this week we're doing Blackpink. So yay. Um, and it, you know, as far as I know, they don't have an overarching storyline. So we're going to be doing kind of, um, we're going to do as a bookish theories because I love her. Uh, and so we're going to do How You Like That, Loves It Girls, Rose's On the Ground, a quick short on Pink Venom, and then Shut Down. Um, so yeah, I am excited to get into this more and just, I, I love these breakdowns. It's just so cool because you just miss things, you know? So anyway, let's go. And I love their MVs. Hello, so. and welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's video, we'd like to talk about Blackpink's How You Like That, focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of the concept, the lyrics, and the music video to celebrate the girl's escape from YG's dungeon. <laughs> How You Like That is a song that explores the themes of victory and rebirth in a situation that is initially not in your favor. Now, even if the lyrics can be interpreted in different ways, the general concept of this comeback seems to be a message for those who hate on Blackpink. <laughs> for those people, that is, whose words are initially able to take a tool on the girls, but they don't stand a chance once they decide to rise and fight back. Mm. As we'll see in a second, this idea is especially evident in the lyrics, but the variety of the settings and the aesthetics that they used in the video is actually closely connected to the themes of the song. So let's dive right in and see what's going on. At the beginning, the video opens <laughs> with Lisa telling us that Blackpink is finally back in our area. Now, the setting of the opening here is immediately very telling because the installation that we see in the room is actually a reference to the Nike of Samothrace, which is a very uh -huh. famous sculpture of the Greek goddess of victory that in this context is used as foreshadowing for the girls' eventual triumph over their haters. I the do love the way you that. The Nike here implies that victory is the main <laughs> theme of the song, right? But in order to achieve this victory, the girls have to rise to the occasion <laughs> and actually reclaim what's rightfully theirs. I don't know. So so the video so shows us funny, this process by portraying the girls gradually arising from their pain. The Will Smith meme, this idea is evident since the very beginning, where we see Jenny with a tear on her cheek in a setting that recalls the bottom of a body of water. Mm. Now, these visuals here are a direct reference to the opening lyrics of the song, where Jenny tells us that she crumbled before our eyes, hit rock bottom and sunk deeper. So this scene is meant to show us the consequences of all the hate that the girls receive on a daily basis. Much like what we see in Jesus' scene, even if at first glance the girls live a life full of beauty and comfort, once you remove this blindfold, the truth is far from pretty. And even if the girls are ready to fight for themselves by grasping the last bit of hope that they have, the video shows us that hate has a destructive effect on both the world that surrounds them and the girls themselves. If you look closely, Jisoo here is dressed in rags and has words written all over her body. And even if it's kinda difficult to make out what these words actually are, mm. you can see the word slut over here and the word envy right here. This I never means noticed that the hateful comments that the girls receive literally leave a mark on them that puts mm. them in a very dark place. And Rosé's scene actually shows us this by portraying her in a hole underground. Much like what we see in the video, the apparent beauty that surrounds them is like a beautiful casket where they can only lie in. But the lyrics also tell us that now it's the haters' turn to suffer because they will reach the light and rise again. Sure enough, this is exactly what happens in the chorus, where we see the girls blooming out of spite like the flowers that surround them. <laughs> you see, they know that their haters don't want them to succeed, and this is exactly what they will. So in the chorus, the girls encourage the haters to look at them and then look at themselves in order <laughs> to show them how miserable they are in comparison to them. While the haters cry in a corner, the girls thrive in a garden, and this is because they worked hard and they know what they deserve. 
Now, in Lisa's scene, this idea is conveyed by portraying her as the boss of a market, which <laughs> could very well be a metaphor for her leading role in the industry. In the lyrics, she tells us that she wants what's hers and that karma is coming for those who hurt her. And even if she feels bad about it, there is nothing she can do because the haters brought it all on themselves. <laughs> now, the idea that she's taking what she wants here is also conveyed in the scene with the throne, where we see her sitting next to an oil lamp that strongly recalls the magic lamp of Aladdin. Much like what happened to the protagonist of that story, Lisa's wishes came true. But in her case, this happened because she worked hard for what she has. She is strong, independent and unapologetic. And this is because she beat the apple. That is, she hijacked the plain Jane in herself and now we are finally seeing the results of this growth. In the pre-chorus, however, we still get the sense that there are times in which the negativity still affects them. So we cut back to Jenny crying tears of blood in a black and pink environment. Once again, this setting kind of implies that the root of I their love, suffering like, the is the very same everything. thing that made them cool. famous. But when we cut to Jisoo, we see that the umbrellas, that is, the representation of those who literally shade them, are now on fire. This means that now they are ready to fight back and reclaim what's theirs. And if in the past the haters' downfall might have been a source of sadness for them, the winter scene actually implies that now they will watch them fall in cold detachment. As Rosé tells us, the haters should have ended them when they lost their wings, that is, when they were weak and they were trapped in the darkness. But now they lost their chance because the girls are back and they are stronger than ever. As we see right before the dance break, now they are the Nike. They have hmm. become the embodiment of victory Those and are my they are ready to fly with the new wings this victory gave part them. Of the video. So, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a boss bitch. And she's coming out with not one, but two Trojan horses. Now, the Trojan horses here are an interesting addition because the Trojan horse is a symbol of deception. You see, in the original myth, the Greeks actually managed to win the war against the Trojans by entering the city, adding inside of a wooden horse that was passed as a present for their enemies. So in this context, the video itself should be regarded as a Trojan horse for Blackpink's haters. If the haters thought that this was yet another opportunity to bash them, now they got owned because the song is literally about them. So as the girls thrive in their black and pink world, they kiss them goodbye and continue to enjoy their success. So that's it Love for it. me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Let's see. All right. Loves it, girl. Oh, I love this one too with them. Oh, yeah. Hello and welcome back to Boogish Theories. In today's video, we'd like to talk about Blackpink's lovesick girls, <laughs> focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of the concept, the lyrics and the music video. Love Sick Girls is a song co-produced by Jenny and co-written by both Jenny and Jisoo oh, that I did deals not with the of love, That's heartbreak cool. and determination. Now, in the album's media conference, Jisoo actually explained that the song tells the story of a group of girls who are constantly hurting their relationships but still find the strength they need in order to set out for a new love. Mm. And right off the bat, this is very telling because, as Jisoo herself has pointed out, the narrative that is portrayed in both the lyrics and the music video is meant to convey a message of hope directed at people who will live through the very same situation. As we'll see in a second, the video shows the girls suffering the consequences of a painful breakup that literally makes them lovesick. But the story that is portrayed in the MV also shows us how the friendship that the girls share with one another helps them overcome this sorrowful experience and makes them hopeful for a better tomorrow. And this is important because, as Jisoo said, this is a song that portrays the painful ending of a relationship to show people who have experienced that heartbreak that it always gets better better. Even if the video is obviously focused on the breakup, another underlying idea here is that friendship can help you overcome this pain. And hmm. Pink wants to be that friend for their blanks, because they use this song as a medium of comfort and healing that conveys the idea that a bad experience should not change your mind about love itself. You see, Love Sick Girls here is a song that perfectly portrays both the black and the pink concepts at the core of the group, because the theme of love sickness is actually approached in two contrasting ways. 
On the one hand, the song expresses this theme by following the regular definition of lovesickness, which is a term that refers to an affliction that produces negative feelings when your loved one is no longer with you or doesn't love you back. Now, in the video, we obviously see a lot of this love sickness because the girls are portrayed dealing with their heartbreak in multiple different ways. But as it turns out, this love sickness is also something that empowers them and defines their identity because even if they feel pain, they also understand that this pain is part of the process of finding love, which is a feeling that they will not give up on despite of their bad experiences. You see, in a way, we can say that the girls here are both sick of love and in love with the idea of love, so this contrast makes them search for new relationships even if they know that they might end up with a heartbreak. And even if on the one hand this may look like a very destructive way to look for love, on the other, it also shows that they are ready to take the risk because hmm, they know that yeah, love is an essential part of who they are. This song here is basically about their longing for love, their hope to find it, and their determination to accomplish this goal no matter what it takes. But right at the beginning, the empowering feeling associated with this concept is overshadowed by the negative oh, side and of love That's sickness, funny. which makes them live in an endless night and makes them feel trapped in a windowless room that represents love itself. As the lyrics start off by admitting that this longing is more powerful than the pain that this love causes, the video portrays Jenny as the survivor of a car crash that symbolizes the ending of her past relationship. In the scene, we get the sense that Jenny and her lover had a fight and that this fight actually destroyed the promise of eternal love that they made to each other. So now Jenny is left alone with the remains of that relationship which she still longs for in spite of the heartbreak. As Lisa's verse tells us, even if they don't know why they still hold on to this unhealthy relationship, their desire to be loved is so strong that they cannot end it before it's over. So while they wait for the inevitable agony, they cling to the illusion of love because its absence would be much worse. <laughs> now in the pre-chorus, Jisoo tells us that maybe they're doing all of this because of a single moment, and while she wonders what they're really looking for, we see her in a field of blue flowers with a broken hourglass in her hands. Now these visuals here are actually very interesting because blue flowers usually symbolize love and the desire for the unreachable. So the fact that she's holding a broken hourglass here implies that even if the moment of love that the girls are striving for is destroyed, they still long for it to the point that they don't care if this love brings them sorrow. As Rosé's scene shows us here, when they are in love, life is all pink, <laughs> the girls are happy and everything is bright, but the pink side of love always comes with the black side of heartbreak, and they know this because they are the lovesick girls. Even if they are born to be alone, the girls love love so much that they accept the black and the pink side of it all. Mm. So even if they wonder why they are still looking for love, the answer is that love is what defines them, which means that they are nothing without this love, but also nothing without the pain associated with it. Now this is obviously a very bittersweet idea to think about, because what the girls are saying here is that you either choose to be alone or to accept love and the suffering that comes with it. But even if the video shows that there is no exit from this loop, the song also <laughs> implies a sense of determination that they will keep on searching until they finally find what they are looking for. In the very next scene, however, we also get a shift in the narrative, because in Lisa and Jenny's scenes, the girls are experiencing the moment after a breakup where they are happy to be alone and they think they are done with love for good. As we see Lisa destroying a car with a hammer that is actually meant for her ex-boyfriend, <laughs> the lyrics tell us that until they find the right person, there is nothing set in stone and they are better off alone. But even if Jenny says that they don't want to be a princess and that a prince is not even on their list, the video portrays her as a patient in an asylum as she is being evaluated by a nurse version of herself. That's showing that it's the love sickness who is making her talk, because soon enough, their desire for love will come back to haunt them. <laughs> As we see Rosé's relationship falling apart and her pink world getting destroyed by the black side of love, Jisoo is literally drowning in the pain that she is nothing without. 
Now, if you look closely, even if Jisoo is obviously in a moment of struggle here, she's not doing anything in order to improve the situation. She's just standing there and allowing the rain to overcome her. And this is because she accepts the pain as a part of love. Even if people pity her, she pities them instead, because in a very twisted way, sorrow is included in the process of finding love. So she feels like her suffering is justified, because the unreachable love that she longs for is worth the pain. When their loved one leaves, the pain is destructive, they become numb from crying and they constantly get hurt, but after a while the pain subsides and the thrill of love returns, so the cycle begins again as their search for love continues. Since they are the lovesick girls, this is the life that they are bound to live, always looking for love and getting hurt in return. But in the second half of the video, we also see what makes them keep going, which is their friendship, which is a car that never crashes and that makes their life always pain. <laughs> because of their friendship, the girls are able to hold on and start again in spite of the pain. They have each other's backs and they can rely on each other for comfort and happiness. And since this is a song meant for the audience, to empathize with. This sense of comfort and hope for a better tomorrow is also meant for blinks who are living the very same situation. Even if right now your life is black, the girls will make it pink, they will support you with their music and make your life a little bit brighter. And this is because they know how you feel, because even if they are the lovesick girls always looking for love, the love that they find in each other and in you gives them the hope that they need in order to move on. So that's it from me today. That was cute. I, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Love this song. Hello and welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's video, we'd like to talk about Rosé's on the ground, focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of the concept, the lyrics, and the music video. On the Ground is a very personal song co-written by Rosé herself that deals with the themes of identity, memory and self-love. Now, as Rosé herself has pointed out during an interview, the song explores Rosé's intention to understand her purpose in life and take care of what matters the most despite being constantly distracted by less important things. Mm, yeah. This is a concept that Rosé is very passionate about and that she feels will resonate with a lot of people, especially in the difficult times that all of us are facing. So, first and foremost, the song is meant to show us that no matter what we are dealing with, everything that we need to overcome this moment is inside of ourselves. Now, in the song, this idea is conveyed by showing us a journey that in many respects explores the origin story of the rosé that we know today. As we see in both the lyrics and the music video, the entire concept heavily relies on contrast. We see a comparison between the past and the present, the striking difference between her dream and the difficult reality behind this dream, but most importantly the contrast between Rosé and Roseanne, who are two sides of the same person that eventually reunite when she's finally able to reconnect with her own roots. You see, in this context, the ground essentially represents everything that makes Rosé the person that she is. It's what defines her identity, as well as the combination of all the important things that we often ignore to pay attention to things that don't matter. So the point of the song is to remind us of our ground, because that is the baseline that we need in order to reconnect with our true selves. As the lyrics tell us, Rosé is obviously very successful and she's also well aware of how hard she worked in order to achieve her dreams, but the reality that she found at the top is not only very different from what she expected, but also more artificial and fake. Even if she's got everything she's ever wanted and her life seems magical and fantastic, the gold that surrounds her turned out to be just plastic. It's meaningless in comparison to what truly matters, so this realization obviously brings her down because this is not how it is supposed to be. Even if she promised herself to never come down, the starway to heaven that she managed to stand on is also a place where roses go to die, but the real rose that Rosé has inside of herself is still there. So the downfall that she was always scared of actually becomes an opportunity to reclaim herself and learn from the past. As we see in the video, Rosé's inner struggle is essentially represented like an apocalypse, <laughs> this is because this journey starts Sometimes with the death like of that. a beautiful lie. 
Everything she's always believed in turned out to be fake and she worked all her life only to realize that that world was only an illusion. So when we see the rosé of the present starting to experience this shift, we also see that she initially rejects the rose that represents her because that flower symbolizes a part of herself that she left behind. When Rosé abandons her persona and exits the theatre, however, she finally comes face to face with her ground, and even if at first she runs away from the explosions, soon enough she embraces the chaos and starts to reconnect with her past self. As the song tells us, while Rosé is overcome by her lifestyle, a voice inside of her head is trying to send her a message, and this message eventually leads her to visit a house belonging to a person that she hasn't seen in years. Now at first glance it might actually seem like Rosé is talking about a person that she loved and that she broke up with a long time ago, but as she said herself, this is not a love song, but rather a song about self-love, so the house that she ends up visiting here is none other than her own. <laughs> this is the place she grew up in Gotta and throw it is Will Smith in there is away from her, but when Rosé travels there with her memory she ends up meeting with Roseanne, who is the girl that created the Rosé of the present and that reminds her that everything she needs is on the ground. As we see the house covered in flowers, Rosé sees her younger self playing the piano and is reminded of her roots, so if at the beginning we saw her rejecting the flower because she ignored Roseanne's message, now Rosé is holding on to that flower because she learned to listen to herself. As we see the past Rosé and the present Rosé overlapping on the swing, we see that her effort to reconnect with her ground essentially reignited her love for music as well as her love for herself. So by the end of the video we see Rosé rising again, but this time as her true self. You see, Rosé here is a flower surrounded by flowers who now know who she is and what she needs. Hmm. She remembers her roots, she's passionate about her craft, and she's now able to live out her dream with a mindset that only focuses on the love that she can give and on the love that she receives through music. So right at the end, the Rosé that we know is now on the ground. She's not hiding in a dressing room, and she fully embraced the chaos that sometimes comes with knowing yourself. Now she's complete, and this is because she knows that everything she needs was always inside of herself. So that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this It's one of my favorite video. solos from them. Did, Tough to pick a favorite like altogether, but I love Rosé so much. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Pink Venom is a song with an eerie and captivating concept that focuses on the alluring power that Blackpink have on fans and haters alike. As they charm the audience with their Pink Venom, that is, their talent and beauty, people cannot help but fall for them, to the point that they cannot think about anything else. The song portrays Blackpink as flowers of venom, metaphorically still in your soul with a melody that is both beautiful and brutal, thus highlighting the duality at the core of the black and pink concept. Jenny, for instance, hypnotizes you with her rap, but as the the camera zooms out, we see Fangs recalling those of a snake about to attack. Lisa's talent brings you in, but she's also holding a poisoned apple that is black on the outside and pink on the inside. <laughs> Jesus has the moon and Rosé has the sun, enchant with their vocal and musical talents, but Jesus sprinkles her poison to intoxicate you, while Rosé steals your heart by breaking the ice with her fire. As the song goes straight to our dome, their eyes turn pink to show it's already too late to escape, cause the pink venom put us all under their spell. Nice. Last video shut down. Hello and welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's <laughs> video we'd like to talk about Blackpink's shutdown, focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of the concept and the references that they included in the MV. Shutdown is a sound that marks Blackpink's return to your area as they shut down those haters that doubt their power, talent and success. The hip-hop style of the track is mixed with a classical sample of La Campanella by Italian composer It was so cool watching the Pianist de Jean and in the lyrics, uh, the performance where they had the violins come out and do it. As they hinted they'll break yet another record to shut people up. In the sound, Blackpink make a point at reminding us that when they pull up it's a shutdown because they claim the area as their own and nobody can do anything about that. As Jenny tells us at the beginning, for instance, this is not a comeback because they never left, <laughs> in the sense that after many years of constant success they're still on top and there they intend to stay. To them the so-called area of the music industry is not a game for the simple fact that they never lost, so as people try to catch up with them, the ghost prove once again that it would be next to impossible 
able to match their power. Now this time around the message of the song is actually expressed with a very interesting video because even if on surface level it has everything that we know and love about Blackpink, it also adds an interesting twist on the Black and Pink concept. As we see in a second, the success that Blackpink is rightfully bragging about is also celebrated with a lot of references to their past videos and songs. Each of these eras contributed to their success, so as they shut down the area and claim it for themselves, we see them commemorating the most important moments of their career. At the beginning, for instance, the video opens with a shot of Lisa in a location that is very reminiscent of her scene back in Playing With Fire. When we are introduced to the members in the car, on the other hand, the pink sunset with the palm trees recalls Pumbaya. The ghost <laughs> themselves in the car is a callback to Wiz, so what the mask that they are wearing has pink fangs referencing pink venom. Next up we get to Jenny, who is portrayed on a glittery tank with pink bags hanging from the barrel. This is an obvious callback to the iconic scene mm. from Doodoo Doodoo, and as we see in a second, that video is possibly the most referenced out of them all. Later on, for instance, we see Rosé swinging from the chandelier like she did back in that video. We see the reappearance of Jesus' mural during her scene with the camera, and if in Doodoo Doodoo she was holding a black umbrella under a rain of fire and water, now she's holding a pink umbrella while it's fittingly <laughs> raining money. And speaking of money, Doodoo Doodoo is also referenced with Lisa, both in the scene with the sword and in the scene with the truck. In both cases, the sword and the pink money first appeared back in that video, but when it comes to the truck itself, the bags and even the speakers, mm. those elements are a reference to Bumbaya. Next up we get to Rosé, and in shutdown we see that she's sitting on the wall like she did back in Wesso. The only difference is that if in the past the planet was normal, now it's black and pink, <laughs> almost as a way of saying that they turned the entire world into their area. In the next scene instead we see her driving a car like she did back in Kill This Love, but once again there is a big difference in the setting. Back then it was her ego driving the car, it was catching up to her, trying to kill the innocent version of herself, but now it's Rosé herself the one driving, also inviting her haters to catch them if they can. <laughs> when we go back to Jen instead, we see that she's lighting a match, which is actually a reference to her scene from Playing With Fire. The heart on the table, however, first appeared in Kill This Love, while the wings might actually be a reference put to how you like that and solo. In the scene where we are blessed with three Jesus in one shot, moreover, we also start to see more and more references all around. We see signs referencing Rose's Gone, well, Pink yeah. Lennon, Sour Candy with Lady Gaga, all of which actually prepare us for the next section of the video where we see the black pink are indeed in your area. <laughs> this is a very cool part I think because the more you look around the more you see references to their career. Right in the front for instance we see signs celebrating Bumbaya, mm -hmm. we so Crazy Over You and Pink Venom. We see La Lisa on the left and Gone on the right to honor Lisa and Rosé's solos while Jenny's solo is referenced in the back together with a nod to Lisa's money and Rosé's on the ground. Other signs celebrate Lost Sick Girls, As If It's Your Last, How You Like That and Pretty Savage. A little bit more hidden, you might also spot a reference to Kiss and Makeup with Dua Lipa <laughs> and a neon ice cream reference in their collaboration with Selena Gomez. If you look closely, blinks are there too, and on the right you can also read a sweet message promising that they will love you forever. By the end of the video we see that after claiming it as their own, Blackpink shut down the area and the ghosts themselves move up together towards a new stage of their life. As a new door opens for them, Blackpink glance at the audience one last time and then move on towards a new area yet to be discovered. The end of the video very much looks like the end of a chapter overlapping with the beginning of yet another one, but to know where this new stage will lead us we'll mm. have to wait and see. In the meantime however, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That was cool. I um... I love when you go through these things. Like I, I did know that there were references to old videos, but it's cool to kind of go through and see them like put out piece by piece. Because I think when we watch this for the first time, I don't. Yeah, we had it. We had not yet gone through all of their MVs, um, and you guys definitely left us all sorts of comments and let us know, you know, that there are callbacks. But yeah, it's cool to kind of go through it again and. Uh, yeah, and see exactly what comes from what. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just as excited to see where they're going to go next with, you know, I know Jenny's got a new label and I'm, I'm just really, really excited to see what they're going to do for solos together. I just hope they 
you know, it seems like they have just way more control now, which is awesome. So I cannot wait to see what they do next. So thank you so much as always for coming in and joining us over here on Patreon. It truly means the world to me that you support me in this way. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.